Coming up in the Buckeye Guard, scramble the jets, see what it takes for the 180th fighter wing to prepare for deployments, and family and friends say goodbye to their soldiers as the 37th Infantry Brigade combat team deploys overseas. Uh, over the course of the last week, the 180th Fighter Wing has been conducted a large-scale readiness exercise, which we're practicing mobilizing and deploying our F-16s for major combat operations overseas. What that consisted of was launching 12 to 14 F-16 aircraft, as well as building up and moving 260 tons of cargo, as well as 330 personnel to support combat or simulated combat operations overseas. Uh, and this exercise we, we conducted in a very short, no notice time frame, which was a challenge for the team to make all that possible, generate the aircraft, pack up, move the cargo, uh, as well as process the, our personnel to, to make that happen. So the personnel deployment function is to ensure eligibility and to receive briefings that deployers need. When a member is deployed, we do have to make sure that their medical records are up to date. Uh, they have they have a accurate dog tag, cat card. They just have everything that they need to be successful as they enter into the deployed location. I would say the most difficult thing about this process is just timing. It's constantly changing. You never know when the aircraft is coming and going. So adapting to that has been the hardest part, um, let alone shift changes, turnover in there. Um, you throw in some anti-terrorism and you throw in some active shooter. That, that gets pretty challenging as you have 30, 50 airmen in here trying to process through and making sure their eligibility is correct on top of that. The one thing that is so important is how rapid we are able to get deployers out the door, um, check their eligibility, get them the briefings that is needed. It is a very quick paced um, procedure and I think that the PDF does very good at it. In a large scale exercise like this, we're gonna make it as hard as possible. And the challenge of this exercise was it was very short notice. Uh, and so you can imagine making this whole operation happen in a two to four day window is a lot of moving parts. And I can't be prouder of the, of the innovation, the work ethic, and the efficiency of our operations to make it happen. Watch out, watch out. The Ohio Army National Guard participated this year in Operation Northern Strike. The country's largest National Guard Bureau sponsored military exercise in Camp Grayling, Michigan. At Northern Strike, combat medics assigned to the 237th Support Battalion, along with their special guests, conducted a mass casualty training exercise as part of their annual training. There was a lot of preparation that went into it. We attended several Northern Strike planning conferences, the commander and I, Major Dorian Marsh. We did a brigade support area operation up here at Camp Grayling in this location, and we ran through MassCal rehearsals as a company. Our cluster that is down the road from us uh, received contact. When that contact happened, we had casualties. Those casualties that were not treated, that were at that cluster, were brought here to us because we have a little bit more capabilities here. We have providers that are able to take care of the patients a little bit more effectively, as well as our Latvian assets that also are accompanying us here on this training. And they integrated into our treatment platoon. They had five personnel with them. Uh, they basically all that we determined were like doctor level. So they're trying to learn from us, like what equipment we're using, how we're documenting, how we're treating as well, and take that back to their country to develop SOPs themselves. We have a pretty incredible crew, morale is high, everything we've thrown at them. We were the first unit in the field. So we've been out here for a minute, training, balancing training, taking rest, giving them classes. I have full confidence that they can do their job. Train to fight, fight to win. That's the motto of the 554 SFAB. And that training took place at Camp Atterbury, Indiana this summer as engineer company advising team 6510 completes their pre-mobilization training before their overseas mission in the Indo-Pacific region. So an SFAB stands for Security Force Assistance Brigade. They're specialized U.S. Army units which are designed to train, advise, assist, uh, partner, and ally nations. So I'm very excited. This is a, a great opportunity. It's not one that you can just get any other 
any other day. It's a four-man team. It's very small. It's very personal, and it, it allows us to get a really hands-on and in-depth with another nation's military and their culture altogether. Our, our four-man team, we have three engineer advisors and one medic. So um, basically, you know, whatever they ask us for, we'll come up with some sort of engineering plan and, and help them along. Um, it could be anything from vertical engineering to horizontal engineering. Loose dry dressing. My role on the team as a medical advisor um, is kind of multifaceted. I, you know, obviously provide medical support to the guys on the team. So I would be advising our partner forces and allied nations on, um, you know, triage responses, um, first aid response, uh, fourth health protection, field sanitation. The advisors went through various trainings in Indiana, including live fire exercises, casualty and medical training, and more. As an engineer company advising team, this SFAB team focuses primarily on engineering. But for this mission, they'll have to work with the embassy of their partner nation and other key leaders. There will be days when they have to put down the camouflage and hard hat and put on their dress shirt and slacks. The, uh, the polo shirt is pretty much a standard thing for us. And then uh, yesterday's training, uh, we were uh, simulating meeting embassy personnel. Uh, so we, show, we showed up in what are called slicks, and that's a, that is a suit and tie. Uh, definitely not what you would normally pack for a, a deployment. So. so when I first heard that, and I was like, kind of excited, to be honest with you. Last deployment, we had three duffel bags and a rock, right? Just Army gear. For this one, we have our three duffel bags and a rock. I now have a bag with suits and button-ups. The team's official name on paper is Engineer Company Advising Team 6510. Alpha Company, 5th Battalion, 54th Security Forces Assistance Regiment, 54th Security Forces Assistance Brigade. But after living together and training together, this four-person team calls themselves a family. I think what's really unique about the SFAB is the small team um, aspect. It really allows you to get to know each other. It allows you to identify each other's strengths and weaknesses and really just build off of that and how you can function to the best of your ability together. Um, it really feels like a family. And when it feels like a family, I think you enjoy what you're doing more. For more information on SFAB, visit nationalguard.com slash SFAB. So one of the first matches we've shot this year as part of the tag matches, first time we've done it, it's called the uh, CNGB or Chief National Guard Bureau matches. The way it runs is it's prone, uh, kneeling, standing position at 25 yards on a zero range. You know, what was special about the range is it is named after Cleto Rodriguez. It was on Rodriguez range that we conducted the CNGB. Um, you know, he's a Medal of Honor winner. Um, the range is named after him. I was proud to be there running that range and watching soldiers improve their skills on a uh, range named after Cleto. Uh, I've been doing military intelligence for three years with the Ohio Army National Guard. Organically, I'm an 88 Mike, which is military transportation, uh, and I switched to 35 Fox Roll because my undergraduate degree is intelligence, and that is my primary aspect outside of the National Guard. I uh, uh, refused my promotion to stay with this team because we're a family where we are. Uh, we all work really well together. I feel really comfortable with everybody there. Uh, we're all really close, and by me going to an E5 slot in another unit, uh, especially outside of where everybody else is, I would feel kind of lost, and I don't want that feeling. 
office that we're in. What drives me to put on the uniform every day is waking up and getting to spend more time with the guys that I work with. And being in that fun environment, uh, it can be really stressful at times, but it can also be a lot of fun. And I remember more fun times than I do the stressful times. And those are what I look forward to when I wake up every day and go in. I mean, it means everything to me. I'll hit 10 years in, so it means quite a lot. I put a lot of time, effort, away from family, but it's something I love to do. Um, I would love to stay in as long as possible at this point, but it, it means a lot because it's given me the opportunities that if I never joined the Guard, I would never be able to do what I did civilian side. This was the missing key and piece for my civilian life. It fully paid for my undergraduate degree, which I was beyond thrilled with. I used the uh, Ohio National Guard scholarship, which paid for that, and that was probably one of the biggest grateful feelings I had was not having to worry about school or having to pay for any of that. Um, I also have friends everywhere now. Um, I met a lot of great people in the Guard. I still keep in contact with people from my old unit, people I met in basic training, AIT, everything. So my friendship definitely grew. The Guard kind of pushed me in the direction that I needed to now do and be the person that I am. The 37th Infantry Brigade Combat Team hosted a series of call to duty ceremonies throughout Ohio as their soldiers prepared to deploy overseas. Family, friends, and special guests said their goodbyes as Ohio Army National Guard soldiers get ready for their mission in support of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve. Everything we advance in the cause of freedom must be protected by those who are willing to do so, and that is you. Thank you for agreeing to serve and to protect and advance the cause of freedom here in America and around the world. The units deploying include the 1st Battalion, 148 Infantry Regiment, the 1st Battalion, 134th Field Artillery Regiment, the 237th Brigade Support Battalion, 2nd Squadron, 107th Cavalry Regiment, the 837th Engineer Battalion, and the Headquarters Headquarters Company from the 37th Infantry Brigade Combat Team. With over 1,000 soldiers deploying, guest speakers thank the families and employers for their support as their soldiers prepare to head overseas. Thank you so much for your tolerance and the grace that you provide many of us, for the flexibility that you have with your hiring and promotion practices. I know for a fact that when it comes from a day-to-day -day operational perspective, having a soldier choose between the Army, their family, and their employer, that which puts food on the table, if it's not a mission critical, you're going to deploy type of scenario, your family comes first, and that which puts food on your table is always going to beat out the Army. So employers, thank you so much, and a round of applause for them.